Hello, welcome to this O3D Con 2021 talk about utilizing the cloud and specifically AWS in the Open3D engine. My name is Pip Potter. I'm an AWS engineering manager and the current organizer of SIG Network, the Open3D engine special interest group for networking and cloud services. I'm joined here today with my colleagues, Jumbo and Guangzhou, who also work for AWS. We have several aims for this talk. First, we aim to give you an overview of the Open3D engine pieces that focus on using the cloud and specifically AWS. Secondly, we aim to give a brief overview of how you can set up and utilize AWS in Open3D engine. Thirdly, we aim to highlight some of the AWS feature gems that provide pre-built game and simulation features powered by the cloud. And finally, we want to highlight how you can use Amazon GameLift to host and scale your multiplayer Open3D engine games in the cloud. We'd like you to leave with a sense of how you could begin to leverage AWS services in your usage of the Open3D engine. And ideally aim to encourage you to engage and contribute to Open3D engine in this space. Before we really start this talk, I wanted to cover the fact that no cloud services, and that includes AWS, are required to use Open3D engine. These integrations will always be optional but hopefully beneficial to you. As we work for and believe in the benefits of AWS, AWS integrations are the focus of our team's contribution to Open3D Engine and of this talk. I wanted to mention that Open3D Engine has a rich set of networking components to provide all the elements for client-server networking, including support for secure TCP and UDP sockets. These parts of the engine are out of scope for today's talk, but please see the other networking-focused talks in the O3D at O3D Econ or the networking documentation for more information. The Open3D Engine provides cloud support today in the form of frameworks for RESTful HTTPS calls, built-in AWS primitives to aid secrets management, request signing to support identification and authorization, request and response modeling, error logging, asynchronous calling support, and more. Open3D Engine also provides pre-built binaries for the AWS C++ C++ SDK, including many common AWS service clients, examples of which include S3, DynamoDB, and Lambda. And the engine also provides frameworks and patterns to aid calling AWS services via scripting, be it Script Canvas or Lua. I like to think there are three tiers of AWS integrations. Firstly, there's the fundamentals. All the basic pieces required to make successful asynchronous calls to RESTful services and specifically AWS services. These include the HTTP request to gem, AWS C++ SDK support, including the AWS native SDK init components and the AWS core gem. This is the focus of the first part of this talk covered by Jumbo. Next, there are the experimentation features. These are designed to provide starting examples that build game and simulation features on top of existing AWS services for experimentation and extension. These samples typically model AWS infrastructure as code using the AWS CloudFormation language. In O3D, we provide samples based on the CloudFormation Development Kit, CDK, including game metrics and client-side federation and authentication to your backend services. These samples can be deployed into your own AWS accounts for experimentation and modification to suit your needs. Clients typically make RESTful calls to a deployed service endpoint, typically using the AWS API Gateway. For those familiar with Lumberyard, this is similar to the Cloud Canvas offering, but with a much lighter weight framework. And finally, we have deep AWS service integrations. These aim to provide all the integration points, tooling, and extensions to really leverage an AWS service within O3DE. The main example here is the AWS GameLift gem, which builds on multiplayer on the Amazon GameLift service, and which Guangzhou will discuss in the second part of this talk. Now I'll hand across to my colleague Jumbo to talk about using AWS inside O3DE. Hi, everyone. My name is Jumbo Liang and I'm a software development engineer at Amazon. Today, I'll show you the basic workflow for using AWS in O3DE. AWS integration features are implemented via O3DE's gem system. 
the AWS Core Gen provides common mechanisms for using AWS services. There are also a few feature gems that support authorization and authentication, metrics analytics, and game lift integration. More features are still in progress and will be added to O3DE in the future. In this demo, I'll focus on the basic functionalities provided by the AWS Core Gem. You can find the source code of this gem inside the gem's AWS Core folder. AWS gems can be enabled for project using CLI or Project Manager. To launch O3DE Project Manager, go to O3DE Editor. Under the File menu, select Edit Project Settings. Config the gems enabled for this project. Select the AWS gems to use and save the change. To send AWS requests from O3DE, I need to provide valid AWS credentials with the permission to access AWS services. In this demo, I'll create a new IAM user and use its credential to config O3DE. Go to AWS Management Console and search for the IAM service. Switch to the Users tab and add a new one. I'll call the new user demo and set credential type to access key. This type allows me to download an access key ID and secret access key of the user, which can be used to config O3DE. Next, I need to set permissions for this user. I'm attaching the administrator access, but you should always follow AWS best practice to limit the permissions of a user. Tags are optional. Then I can review the user details and confirm the creation. After the user is created, I can download the credential file which contains the access and secret keys. Next, I want to import AWS credentials to my local machine and make it available in O3DE. This can be done using AWS command line interface. O3DE developers can always reference AWS CLI documentation for the setup process and commands. In this demo, I'll import the credential file I just downloaded. Open a command prompt window and use the import command. This command created a named profile, which is a collection of settings and credentials I can use in O3DE and AWS CLI. The profile has the exact same name as the IAM user. I also need to set the AWS region used by this profile. Now I can list all the available profiles on my local machine. We can see that the new profile was created successfully. Next step is to edit the project configuration to provide this profile to O3DE. Configuration file can be found inside the registry folder of the project. Open AWS Core Configuration and set the profile name here. At this point, I've finished the AWS credentials setup for O3DE. AWS gems are not responsible for deploying resources on behalf of developers. Instead, 
They provide reference CDK applications for managing and modeling AWS resources. CDK is short for AWS Cloud Development Kit, which is an open source framework to define cloud application resources using familiar programming languages. In O3DE, CDK applications were written in Python, but developers can create their own CDK application using languages like TypeScript as well. You can find the source code of the CDK application inside the CDK folder of each AWS gem. Developers can experiment with these applications or modify them based on their custom requirements. In this demo, I'll deploy the CDK application for the AWS Core gem. Navigate to the CDK folder. I don't want to install all the CDK library dependencies to my global Python environment. Instead, I'll create an isolated Python virtual environment for this deployment. Then activate the virtual environment. Now I can install all the dependencies of this CDK application. I can validate the CDK application before deploy it using the CDK synth command. This command creates the equivalent of the CDK application as a CloudFormation template. No errors are reported. This CDK application contains two CloudFormation stacks. CloudFormation stack is a collection of AWS resources that can be managed as a single unit. The AWS core stack contains common resources that can be shared by AWS features. The example stack contains some resources developers can experiment with, like an S3 bucket, a DynamoDB table, and a Lambda function. Now I can deploy the CDK application. Normally it can take a few minutes, but I've already deployed this application in my account before the demo. Developers can also change the AWS project name and deployment region using environment variables. After the deployment, I can check all the resources in the AWS console. Search for CloudFormation. Find the stack deployed by CDK. Here, I can see a list of resources in this stack. I can also check the stack outputs as a reference during my development. After all the resources are created, I want to save the resource information on the client to avoid frequent AWS calls to describe stacks. In O3DE, I can cache resource information by importing resources to the resource mapping config file. O3DE provides the resource mapping tool to help manage this file. This tool can be launched as a standalone application or from the O3DE editor. Under the AWS menu, select AWS Resource Mapping Tool. I can import loose AWS resources or resources from CloudFormation stacks. To import loose resource, 
I also need to select the resource type. In this demo, I'll import an S3 bucket deployed by CDK. Search for all the CloudFormation stacks under my account. Find the one deployed by CDK and select the example S3 bucket. I need to provide a key name for this bucket so I can easily reference it inside my O3DE application code instead of using the full resource arm. I'll call it test bucket. Then save the change. In O3DE application, developers may need to check whether a file exists or not in an S3 bucket. This can be done using the head object call, which is used to retrieve S3 object metadata. In this demo, I'll show you how you can do that using script canvas. I created a script canvas graph for this demo. This graph will reload all the resource mappings and send the head object request. The head object call requires two parameters, the bucket key name and object key. For the bucket key name, I'm using the value imported in the resource mapping tool. Object key is the unique identifier of the S3 object. I'm using the name of a file stored in the example S3 bucket. This is an asynchronous call, so I'm listening to the notification and print out the corresponding messages. This graph has been already attached to an entity in the demo level. Now I'll run the level. Let's check the editor log. I can see a log line like this. It shows that the request was sent successfully and the object was also found in the S3 bucket. Another use case is to submit metrics events from O3DE and visualize the result. AWS metrics gem depends on the AWS core gem and provides an out-of-box solution for the metrics analytics pipeline. I already deployed the CDK application for the metrics gem in my account. I also imported the REST API stage and REST API ID using the resource mapping tool. These two resources will be used by the AWS Core Gem to construct the full endpoint URL when sending requests. I created another script canvas graph for this demo. This graph will create a matrix event called login and send the event to the backend every one second. I'm also listening to the notifications of these asynchronous calls. This graph has already been attached to another entity in my demo level. Now I'll run the level. As we can see in the console log, metrics are submitted and sent successfully to the backend. Now let's check the visualization. Search for CloudWatch in the AWS console. Switch to the Dashboards tab. Here, 
I can see a dashboard deployed by CDK. This dashboard contains both of the operational health and real-time streaming analytics data. Let me change the time range so we can see the visualization with some previous data I sent. In this graph, I can check the total number of events, the lambda process success rate, and the total number of logins. I can also change the refresh rate in this graph. OK, I hope the demo today can give you some basic idea about using AWS in O3DE. Now I'll hand over to my colleague, Guanzhou, to show you the GameLift integration. Thank you. Thank you, Junbo. Hello, everyone. This is Guanzhou Liu. Today, I'm going to cover the topic about using Amazon GameLift in O3DE. First, let's have an overview of Amazon GameLift. Amazon GameLift is a dedicated game server hosting solution that deploys, operates, and scales cloud servers for multiplayer games. GameLift uses the power of AWS to deliver the low latency, low player wait times, and maximum cost savings. For Amazon GameLift features, they fall into two parts. First is infrastructure management. Because of the power of AWS, Amazon GameLift is auto-scalable, highly available, and secured. Second is session management. GameLift allows players to connect to games through game session. When player joins game, there will be a player session created for it, and Amazon GameLift keeps track of all the player and game session in backend. For more details, you can find it on Amazon GameLift public documentation. In order to provide better user experience, we have introduced the AWS GameLift gem with OCDE. AWS GameLift Gem provides a framework to extend the OCD networking layer and let the multiplayer gem work with Amazon GameLift service. AWS GameLift Gem also provides integration with both GameLift Server SDK and AWS Client SDK, which saves tons of setup time for OCD developer. Besides that, AWS GameLift Gem also provides a sample of CDK application which is a good practice to manage GameLift resources. Developers can deploy the sample CDK application to set up basic GameLift resources or modify the sample to meet their needs. Let's have a high level view about how AWS GameLift Gem works. For OCDE client application, in order to join a game hosted on Amazon GameLift, client must be able to find an available game session. AWS GameLift Jam is used to communicate with Amazon GameLift service to get those information. They can make AWS request calls and in response to receive game session data like connection details. For OCD server process, it's uploaded and deployed to Amazon GameLift to host the game session and accept the player connections. AWS GameLift Jam on server side is also used to communicate with Amazon GameLift service by using GameLift Server SDK. In this way, server process can get data from GameLift service to start game session, destroy game session, report status of game sessions, and validate new connected players. In general, AWS GameLift Jam works on both client and server sides independently but they share sync data from Amazon GameLift service. Another benefit of using Amazon GameLift for multiplayer game is about using EC2 instance profile to access other AWS service on server side. As your server application is deployed and running on EC2 instance, you can utilize instance profile to get AWS IAM role because role credentials are temporary and rotated automatically. You don't have to manage credentials and you don't need to worry about long-term security risk. 
So from high level architecture, you can see there are two required tasks for multiplayer game if you want to use Amazon Game Lift, which are server and client integrations. Here, let's talk more about what is required for each one. As game session is created and running on Amazon Game Lift, Amazon Game Lift service is the source of truth about a game session. So it is quite important that server process can communicate with Amazon Game Lift service properly. In order to do that, first server process should be able to notify Game Lift service when it is ready. And second, it should be able to respond to events from Game Lift service. Because Game Lift service will only allocate ready server process to create a new game session, so you have to notify Game Lift service about it. In this step, AWS Game Lift GM will also set up log paths and a port for server process, which is going to be used by client to connect. AWS Game Lift GM will also link Game Lift events with OCD bus notifications like on create session begin on session health check, etc. And we will talk more about these notifications in next page. There is an eBus called Notify Game Lift Process Ready provided by AWS Game Lift Gen. As developer, you should place this call after any server relevant initialization in early phase. And we recommend to put it in server system component activated function, like the example we show here. As we mentioned before, after server process ready, Amazon Game Lift service will allocate and create a new game session with it. Then server process will start getting notifications, which are broadcast through session notification bus. Developers should program how your server process respond to these notifications. First is on create session begin. When the session begins to create, this notification is broadcast with game session properties from Game Lift on the server side. During this step, developers should process game and player data and any required setup task, like loading game level on the server side. Second is on session health check. When server process is ready and running, this notification is broadcast regularly which developers should use to evaluate and report the status of the server process. If a server process continues to report unhealthy or does not respond for three consecutive health checks, the Game Lift service may shut down the process and start a new one. Third, is on destroy session begin. When the session begins to terminate, this notification is broadcast to perform cleanup operations. During this step, developers should gracefully disconnect players, preserve server data, and do rest the cleanup task. After server integration, let's see what is required for client integration. As players connect to games through game session, for, for client application, it must implement following use cases to manage a game session, which includes create session, search sessions, join session and leave session. Amazon Game Lift provides two different ways of creating game session. One is creating game session on specific fleet, and another is creating through queue. Queue is a collection of multiple fleets with configurable fleet priority. In this way, when you try to create game session through queue, it automate the process of allocating new game session on any queue in this group based on the priority. AWS Game Lift Jam provides both C++ APIs and scripting function to support all these use cases. Here, let's use the script canvas as an example. If you want to create a session on specific Amazon Game Lift fleet, First, you should create a script canvas graph variable with create session request type, which you can provide some game session settings like a fleet ID or alias ID, session name, max player, etc. In our example, we try to create a game session with 10 max players and my game session as session name. 
And we also provide Amazon Game Lift Fleet ID. We want to create this session. Here, the value is just an example. In practice, you should get this value after your Game Lift resource is deployed. After a request variable has been created, then you can send out this request by using create session API node. Here, we use the asynchronous node, which will be executed in a separate thread because it is a HTTP request call. It could take a long time to finish, so we don't want it to block the main game thread. Once the request has been sent out successfully from client, Amazon Game Lift service will invoke the REST process on server side to create and activate the game session. Later, you should be able to find the active game session by using Search Session API. Here is another example of how to join a game session. Similar to create session use case, for join session, first, you should create a script canvas graph variable with join session request type, which you have to provide the player ID information and the session ID you want to join. In our example, we leave session ID empty here, but in practice, this value should get from search session result. Then you can send out this request by using join session API node. Join session process includes two parts once the request has been sent out. First, Amazon Game Lift service will reserve a player slot, which corresponds to a unique player session in the game session. If this step succeeds, then it will return the connection information back to the client, including DNS name, IP address, and port number. Then O3D networking layer will use this information to configure and build the connection. After that, player will be connected to the game session. And don't worry, AWS Game Lift Jam has done this works for you. Once client and server both have been integrated properly to your multiplayer game, the left work is to package and deploy your server application to Amazon Game Lift. Currently, we provide detailed instruction to guide developer build and package server application. You can find more details on public O3D documentation page. Here, I want to talk more about how to deploy server application to Amazon Game Lift through CDK. With AWS Game Lift Jam, there is a CDK application sample which can deploy the basic Game Lift resources. But before deploying CDK application as deploy developer, you should modify fleet configuration file in the sample to configure Game Lift resources as you want. Because CDK application need those information to define your Game Lift resources, like where to find your server build what is your fleet settings, what is your networking settings, etc. For example, with this configuration, you could see we set the fleet build path, which is the location of our server application build files. CDK also supports build ID here. If server build files have already been uploaded to Amazon Game Lift, we set fleet with Windows operating system and it requires C5 larger on demand instant type. We also set fleet networking inbound permission by accepting all IP address and a specific port number because we want all clients can connect to the server by using this port. Finally, we also set some runtime configuration for server process like the server application launch path and server launch parameter. All these are just an example. The value should depend on your own use case. Then follow the CDK instruction to deploy the CDK application. Assuming it is the first time to deploy a server application, the process has three parts. First, CDK will upload the server build to Amazon Game Lift. Then it will create a Game Lift fleet from the server build and provide the fleet configuration. Last, it will activate the Game Lift fleet. Once the process is done, you should see the results as following this example. And in general, it, it can take a long time for Gamma Lift Fleet to be activated. 
you can see my fleet takes around 30 minutes to be activated. But the time varies based on server build size and game lift resources as try, you're trying to create. Once CDK deployment is complete, you should also expect to see following events log from Amazon Game Lift console. Game Lift tries to extract server build first, then it processes installer, validate server runtime config, last it tries to activate the fleet. Finally, you should see your Game Lift fleet in active status and your server process is ready to host game session at this point. There will be more features coming after O3D release, like Amazon GameLift Flex Match for multiplayer matchmaking and uh, Amazon GameLift TLS support. Of course, you can find all details on O3D public documentation. Thank you for watching. Next, I will hand over to my colleague, Pip. I really hope this talk was useful, and I really appreciate you joining us as we discussed how to utilize AWS in the Open3D engine. If you'd like to get involved, I'd encourage you to join SIG Network on Discord. We also have public meetings listed on the O3D calendar relating to networking and cloud services. I'd encourage you to submit issues, feature requests, and RFCs in this area, and hopefully contribute work. Uh, I've also included references here to the starting guides, where you can find all the information you should require under the AWS GEM section of the O3DE doc site. Thank you ever so much for watching. And I really hope to see some of you in SIG Network on Discord. I hope the rest of your O3DE con is great. Thanks again.